So the other day I was talking with a student and they were like, well, how much is it exactly to get into oil painting? And I was like, um, well, you need this and this and this. And, and to be honest with you, I didn't know. So I went shopping. Um, and before I kind of talk about everything, uh, first about me, um, I don't mind spending money uh, as long as I get the best bang for the buck. And so ultimately, I will buy tons of things that are in clearance as and potentially I don't even need them but I'll buy a ton of things on clearance and get the best price um, so I went shopping and I kind of looked around the other day and I went to some really odd places to find some supplies and honestly they were dirt cheap so that's why I bought them um, okay first uh, you need a canvas something to paint on. Um, so the way oil paint works is basically you paint on a, a, usually a canvas or like a canvas panel or something like that. And that will give you uh, your surface to work on. And you can, there's other mediums out there. You can use paper and illustration board and all this stuff. But for our purposes, canvas, canvas panel. Um, Dollar Tree. Uh, Dollar Tree is actually now selling small canvases. So here's a canvas, uh, canvas panels. This is uh, what eight by six? No, eight by ten. Uh, canvases. They're all a dollar. And to be honest with you, uh, the thing about canvases, they're all the same um, for the most part. There is two major differences in canvases and canvas panels. Uh, first thing, canvas. Uh, the wood on the back side here is ultimately uh, one of your major differences. So as you step up in price of the canvas, if you will, the you're, you're gonna pay for the wood. That's a major kind of issue. Um, and then the second thing is the canvas itself. Now, with most canvases, if you look at them, they're, to be honest with you, they're really rough. Um, and let me... So let me just open this up here. So canvases are basically the wood and then they have the panel. And then the thing with the canvas, the panel, is they put paint on it. And the paint is what you're painting on. So usually it's an acrylic paint, uh, something like a gesso um, or something like that. And it's sprayed super thin. So in this case, um, the canvas panel from the dollar store is the typical stuff that you pay at Michael's or Joann's or Hobby Lobby. It's that, that typical canvas. Now, uh, one of the things that that uh, you can always look at is one, how like fl flimsy it is. So when you press into it, it's really kind of springy and some people don't like working on that. I personally don't like working on that. Uh, the fix to that is uh, you can actually put a little gesso or a little bit of water on the back here, and uh, that will tighten this canvas up really quite a bit. Um, but for a dollar canvas to just kind of play around with, these actually look pretty good. Um, yeah, I see a little bit of um, I see a little bit of wood in there that 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 like is is causing some bumps and stuff like that, or or the joints ain't put together. But to be honest with you, for a dollar, they're pretty solid. Um, and on top of that, when you buy a canvas, now I went and I went to the dollar store and I bought my canvases here. Um, and I paid, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bucks for, for canvases plus panels. So these little small panels have three of them in there. So uh, for testing things out, uh, these are great for even doing small portraits and small things like that. These work awesome. Um, so that is that is you know stuff that you can find out there. And while I was out there, I, I visited Joann's and um, these panels. So I bought these panels. These are 16 by 20 panels, which is is most of your portrait size aspect ratio. Um, but I bought those panels for like eight bucks. They were on clearance. I, I bought out the whole store. 
Um, and so doing that type of thing saves me money in the long run. Um, I've got a stockpile of canvases that I can always pull out another one and use. Um, and to make the canvases even better, um, again, remember I talked about the, the rough grain when you look at the, the canvas. So the rough grain on a canvas basically sucks up more paint. And I don't like thick paint. It's my preference. I know some, some people just blop it on like you wouldn't believe. Um, I'm not that guy. Uh, so what I do is I actually... Um, you can buy gesso. So this is Liquitex. Oh, that's my link paste. So this is acrylic gesso. Um, and this is what most of your canvases have on them. And you can actually just stir that up and paint it on. Um, grab some fine, like three, four hundred grit sandpaper, sand it down, and and um, keep going. Now I have a mix jar here, and I lost my jar, but I have a mix jar here of modeling paste. So I use about uh, one part modeling paste, two parts gesso, and I mix it together really good. So it's like this soupy goo, and then I basically uh, paint right on my canvas and then sand it down and you get a really nice smooth surface and that's what I like painting on um, I don't use a I use a lot of little layers um, or I use straight oil paint I don't use a ton of like extra stuff so that's that's uh, to prep your canvas and to be honest with you uh, you can pick up a jar of that for like 10 bucks um, the next thing is something to put the paint on um, Painting uh, is is messy, and so there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. Um, to be honest with you, you can go in and and this is an old uh, paper palette that I, I I think even my it was my wife's, but it's basically a wax style paper um, on one side, and then like it's smooth paper. To be honest with you, it waste of money, um, and the reason it's a waste of money is you can go buy a roll of parchment paper or you can go buy a roll of, this was a dollar at the Dollar Tree, by the way, um, parchment paper or wax paper. Um, and you can go buy a roll of this or sheets of this and get the same thing for a lot less value. So there's that. Um, but I don't, I don't paint like that. Um, I, that just to me it seems like I'm wasting stuff, especially since I paint continually. So uh, what I wound up doing, and just looking at there, there's these palettes too, just FYI. Uh, the palettes are okay for plain air painting, but to be honest with you, when I'm painting a four foot by eight, or four foot by three foot painting, I don't want to sit and hold this thing in my hand all day long. Um, so this is out there. This was uh, like five bucks. And honestly, if you buy one and, and are good with a jigsaw, you can make your own out of some masonite board. I used to do that back in the day. Um, kind of a waste of time. But uh, anyway, so the, um, the next thing is uh, this is actually something I found. Um, so I was digging through the Dollar Tree, and I'm really a big fan of Dollar Tree because I can find a lot of weird stuff there. And this is basically a just a sheet of glass. Um, it's used for putting spoons on top and things like that. So it's used for, for spoons, um, just kind of a mess holder. It's got the little pigs in there. But to be honest with you, uh, for the dollar, flip it upside down. It's got a nice smooth surface. You can paint on it. And then I went and bought, you can get these from the dollar, you can buy something similar like this to the dollar store. Um, but I actually bought this at AutoZone and the reason I like it is because it's a razor blade with a curve on it. So it just feels like, I just feels a lot better. I don't know why I like it. It's, it's I've got a couple of them, um, but it just takes flat razor blades and you just scrape it off and you're done and they're, they're awesome. So, so if you're looking for a palette, that works great. Um, I, in fact, uh, you can kind of see it here, a little bit of my mess. Uh, but I actually use some storm panels, uh, storm panes, glass. They're just basically two panes put on my desk here. And then I just dump the paint right on there and scrape it off. And I've never had a problem with it. Um, and like I said, I, you can go to the ReStore 
um, and probably find a couple of used ones that are really junky to do something bigger like that if you want. Okay, so the next thing comes to paint. And paint is one of those things that everyone's got a preference. Um, you know, I, I look at some of the, some people and they're like, oh, I use nothing but like Georgian oil or I use nothing but, you know, Academy oil or whatever your, your, your methodology is. But if you're just getting started, don't worry about it. Um, I actually went and bought uh, two packs of paint. Uh, they both were on clearance. This one was seven and this one was 13. Uh, I don't know how good these are at all. Um, but for the money and to get started, it gives you a good representation of what you're doing. This one is uh, 12, 12 colors and it's got uh, two brushes in there, which to be honest with you, uh, most, of the, most of the time these brushes are junk. Um, I'll get into brushes in a second here. Um, but for the most part, this is, uh, gives you most of your colors that you need. Um, to be honest with you, any, if you, if you understand painting, you understand color mixing. Um, and so you understand how to mix colors back and forth. Um, there's two types of paint. There's a transparent paint and then there is a, um, there is an opaque paint. And this one will have like, uh, this one has zinc white in there, this one has lemon yellow, yellow ochre, vermilion, uh, scarlet, ultramar uh, ultramarine blue, um, phthalo blue, emerald green, uh, viridian, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and black. Um, and to be honest with you, I won't probably use the, the zinc white because I'm not a fan of the transparents. Um, I won't use... Um, the black because I make my own black using a phthalo blue and a um, like a deep red so like a crimson um, but honestly to start out with perfectly fine um, works great and then these brushes here just looking at these brushes uh, they're nothing special they're very hard bristle and I'll, I'll kind of talk about that in a second here you can see stuff floating off of it um, but honestly, nothing special, so don't even worry about it. Um, this is King Art. I, I don't know the brand. I just, I found them at Joann's, so I was like, okay, we'll give it a try. And it was 13 bucks on clearance, so I bought one. Um, and it's actually got titanium white, which is the opaque version. Um, it's got lemon yellow, mid yellow, yellow ochre, rose, orange, I mean, going down the whole thing. It has got most of the colors, um, but it's got a couple extras that I would use, like the crimson red, things like that. But for 13 bucks, this is fine. Like clearance is perfectly fine. Um, but Joann's is, was a good spot to get that stuff. Um, so with that in mind, the next thing we come to is brushes. <sighs> brushes are one of those things that it's wholly up to preference. Um, I actually, um, went to the dollar store and I bought a I bought my brush holder my high-tech uh, green styrofoam thing I don't know what it, it's for the plants and you just shove your plants in there but you just shove your brushes in there and it works amazing like so I've got so many different weird brushes in here but I tend to like the flat ones myself um, filberts and things like that I, I use occasionally but I like the flat uh, hard edge. I don't know, it just feels like it's like it works for me. Um, and I actually have bought so many brushes in the past that I have a jar floating around that my wife steals on me that uh, it's basically brushes I don't like. So I'll use it once and I'll be like, I don't like that. And I put it in that jar and my wife takes it and she uses it for her, her stuff. Um, but honestly, um, you need, if you're gonna apply gesso, you need a big brush. Um, paint store. I actually picked this up for like two bucks at uh, Michael's, but the big thing is make sure that the bristles don't fall off. Um, any type of brush that you have, if you have bristles falling off, um, like if I go like this and uh, my hand is full of this, um, and this one's actually surprisingly good, but if you if you grab on it and it's got bristles in your hand, 
it's a junk brush. Um, all those bristles are going to wind up in your in your stuff. Get rid of it. Uh, in fact, uh, I recently bought some just cheap ones from Artist Loft, um, kind of like this, and uh, like. I literally used it once and there was like six bristles in there and then when I went to clean it off, literally the brushes came away from the head. I threw it away instantly. I tried another one and I wound up throwing out a four pack because they were so bad. Um, so there's those. Um, and then you can buy these brush packs. And again, you kind of want to play around with it before you, you get it. So I've, I actually wound up restocking my brush packs. Um, because they were on clearance and I just kept spending the money so I got some extra brushes anyway so I bought these extra brushes and um, and honestly the the best thing you can do is just snap it open and take one of the brushes out and just kind of feel it um, the difference between oil and acrylic brushes is basically firmness. And me personally, I don't like that hard bristly brush. And that's actually what these are. Um, these are like super hard, like hard, hard, hard brushes. And so there's no bend in it. Like the the brush doesn't doesn't feel like it bends on the uh, on the surface. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of these. And and like they sell them there by themselves. But I, I just don't like them. I, I I understand the purpose of them, but for me personally, not a good feeling. Um, so I like more of the acrylic style brushes, where when I bend it, um, like something like this, where when I bend the brush, it 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 bows a little bit. So I can actually like kind of like put a little pressure on one side and and pull up, and I can you know I can get a flat surface. I can get a, a, a line. A nice straight line so um, like I like these um, and again it just basically boils into like how good the brush is like if you're consistently like playing around with it and the bristles don't fall off it's a good brush and to be honest with you most brushes will fall apart um, I, I don't know I know a lot of artists who have to buy the $50 brush and I would never got that myself. Um, I know on the opposite spectrum, I know an artist who buys, I think they're like $2 brushes and he throws them away after the painting. They're, they're just that disposable. Um, but your brush is what, what comes. And there's different types of brushes. And to be honest with you, it's really up to preference. Uh, you know, I find so many times that I'll pick up a brush and I just don't like the feel of it. I don't like the handle, I don't like the grip, and, and then just put it in my, my wife takey jar and, and it's gone. Um, but, so that, that's kind of the, the idea of brushes. But to be honest with you, I did go to the dollar store, yay, and I picked up some dollar brushes. And to be honest with you, um, there's, yeah, there's, there's like a little, like I pulled this out. So this is a part of the $10 pack and this is part of the $1 two pack. And there is a bristle that's, that's floating here. Um, but honestly, a little scissors would cut that off. But I, I honestly like don't, I'm not pulling out bristles there. It, it's got the same feel as like, it's got the same feel as the more expensive brush. And the only thing that I notice is that on the dollar brush is that this has got a little bit more wobble in it. And to be honest with you, a player's on the end will squeeze that right down. In fact, I've done that to a couple of brushes that I really liked where the, the metal part just falls away from the wood and I just snap it back on and I crimp it down with a, with a brush. So then that leads you with... Um, a thinner. You're going to need a thinner for, for two things. One, you're going to need a thinner to paint, uh, to thin out your paint, um, usually under paintings, um, layering, that type of thing. And so you'll need some type of thinner to cr clean your oil paints. And um, to be honest with you, you can buy like the thinners that they have at, at the store. I mean, there's, 
they have tons of different ones. Um, they're kind of pricey, and this is an old bottle that I use. Um, and the first thing I recommend is low odor. Uh, get yourself a low odor um, thinner, that way you don't have to smell it. I've actually got a, a air filter underneath my desk that so I don't smell the the thinners and the oils in my in my office here, um, and it actually works quite good. Uh, but the big thing about buying thinners is you really don't need to buy them from the art store. You want to go to the hardware store. <clears throat> so um, this little bottle here, this little bottle, I think I paid like seven or eight bucks for it. These two bottles, I paid five bucks a piece. Um, and so essentially they are oil thinners. Uh, th this is low order, eh, low order, odor, low order um, mineral spirits. I just want to keep saying odor. I don't know why. Um, so these are, this is mineral spirits. It's low odor. Um, uh, this is like a quart for five bucks I paid for it um, and then I saw this next to it and I'm kinda interested in what this is gonna be like but I bought this this is called Green Envy and it's a paint thinner um, used for thinning oils and latex paints and so it's it's a uh, non-toxic uh, less flammable and so I'm kinda curious I'm gonna try it and see how that works but five bucks versus seven bucks and to be honest with you um, check your hardware stores too because the same bottle of the same quart of mineral spirits was five dollars more expensive at a different different hardware store um, and then so storage of this materials so I don't store this these chemicals these strong chemicals at my desk I just don't it's too big I, I store it in a shed and in a basement so I don't have to deal with it um, but I do keep it on hand. So I buy these little, I don't know, like ketchup bottles. You can buy them at the art store. You can buy them at the dollar store. Um, you can buy them pretty much anywhere. And to be honest with you, they work great. Um, I buy these, and I buy these little ramekins here. Um, and here's my used one. And the ramekins, they last for like six months to a year, and I throw them out because they just get so so much filtered um, oil grit and junk on there that I just, I dump them. But you can buy a four pack from the Dollar Tree um, and they work great for like little dishes. But these these come in really handy. I, I like these. Um, and so I also use, uh, this is my linseed oil too. So that's my next thing. Um, Linseed oil. Uh, now, there's mediums that you can mix with oil, and they do different things. Oh boy, do they do a lot of different things. Um, so, mediums. Um, there is linseed oil here. There is uh, liquin. There is uh, drying poppy seed oil. There is saffron oil. There is alkaloids. There's The list goes on and on and on. And to be honest with you, a lot of it is not necessary. Um, you can get a refined linseed oil, so I picked this up at Hobby Lobby for 10 bucks. Um, the more refined the oil is, the clearer it becomes. Um, so you can definitely tell like kind of variance. Uh, let me see here. This is this is linseed stand oil, and this is essentially just a dark color. Um, and the other aspect is that you don't need much of it. Um, literally, I, I've probably used I've probably used this much in the last six months. Um, you don't. You just need a couple drops, and it takes you really, really far um, with oil paints. And so you don't need you don't need a ton of it. Okay. Um, yeah, you just don't need a ton of it. So get yourself a little bottle to start with um, and go from there. Um, but in all reality, it's really, uh, it's really cheap to get started. I'd figure like if I would buy this stuff, 
let's say, let's buy $10 worth of canvases. Let's buy uh, $5 worth of um, mineral spirits. Uh, we can buy a $10 paint palette. We're already up to $25. Bucks. Um, let's spend 5 bucks on brushes uh, at the dollar store or Dollar Tree. And so you're looking at about 30 bucks, maybe 40, 50, depending on what, what you go. Um, if you're working small, I, I don't, when I have a small canvas, I don't use an easel. I mean, an easel is something you can get if you want. You can actually build an easel really simply out of like three pieces of wood and some hinges. Um, there's, there's a couple plans out there that I've seen that are just really cool. Um, but yeah, you don't need to spend on money on an easel if you're just starting out. Um, just make sure you got newsprint because cleanup is, is a nightmare. And I just recommend something, some place in your house that is that is more set aside for that. Um, and and ultimately, that is pretty much it. Like you don't need a ton of stuff to start oiling. So I would say under fifty bucks easily. Um, and again, like I said, if you are thinking of getting into it and you walk past it on clearance, pick it up. Like if that's something you want to do, go for it. Um, and that's that's pretty much what you need to get started. Um, you, there's, you know, clean little things like cleanups. Um, you know, and I use these little things like old toothbrushes and palette knives once in a while. And these are plastic things, but you don't need that to get started. Um, oh, and one final thing. So this is something that I would add into the mix too. Um, so this is a brush tank and you use this to clean your brushes and I'm not saying you can't use an old queso jar um, but ultimately with what this brush has in it is and I don't even know if I can get it out because it's so stuck in there um, but what this brush has in it is and you can barely see that at all here is is a wire bubble in there and I you use that to brush and clean the brushes um, and you just put mineral spirits in there and seal it up um, the big thing about oil oil paints is just having a little bit of, of common sense. Don't sit and paint in a closet where it's unventilated. Um, you know, paint out in the the open air or at least put an air purifier in there um, because it will stink up the place uh, if you just leave it sit. Um, make sure you're well lit. Make sure you're you're you've got the stuff that you want as far as that goes. And that's really all you need. Um, you know, be safe with it and, and it'll be fine. Uh, and I think that's it. Um, so, uh, if you guys have questions or you're looking for something in particular, let me know. Um, I'm more than happy to help. And if you want to critique, send it to my email as well. And uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, if you like it, subscribe. Thanks, guys. Gals. Bye.